This video will discuss how to use the batch report option to view and close deposit batches, explain how receipts are assigned to batches, and give an overview to the various reports available from the batch report option in the tenant ledger receipts and adjustments screen. To access the batch report options, pull up the tenant accounting, tenant ledger receipts and adjustments option, and then select batch report down at the bottom. In the batch report screen, we can select which cash receipt location to view, which will in turn show us all the batches for that location. We can also run various reports and close any open batches. The location option is up here, and I can select the various different cash receipt locations. Viewing the list of batches, we can see the batch number, the range of dates of receipts that it contains, the batch total, and whether or not it has been closed. To close a batch, click on the batch you want to close and select Close Batch. You will get a yes or no prompt which gives you the option to cancel closing the batch if you select no. After you close the batch, the next receipt that is entered will go into a brand new open batch and all future receipts will go into that batch until it is closed. You should always close your batches every time you take a deposit to the bank for a cash receipt location. Generally, your list of batches in the batch report should perfectly match all of your bank deposits for the month. Also, there are various reports we can run. The batch report will give us a simple list of all receipts in the batch that we have selected, and it will also give us the tenant's name and account number. the total of the individual receipt, and the type of payments such as cash, check, or money order. At the bottom, we will see the totals for the batch and a breakdown of the various payment type totals. The bank report is very similar to the batch report, but it will split up the totals based on the bank account for different programs. For instance, if you use a bank account for low rent and a different account for tax credit, the totals for each account will be split. We'll, we will still get a breakdown on cash check or money order if you select the Include Payment Details checkbox. And here is what the report looks like. And in this case, the only bank account set up was General Fund, but uh, if we had other bank accounts tied to programs or projects, it would split those up. The batch summary report gives you a breakdown of where the payments were applied. Here we can see that some of the batch was for accounts receivable and there was also a $500 miscellaneous receipt. Lastly, the month to date batch report can be run by selecting MTD batch report. This report will list all batches in the selected location and display how much of the payments went to each of your programs and will give a total of each batch before displaying the grand total for all batches at the bottom. So here we see 173 was split partially between public housing and Section 8 vouchers, and then 174 was all going towards the public housing program. It is important to note that whenever you notice your batch total is not correct, it is because one or more receipts in the batch are either missing or not entered in with the right amount. In these cases, you must pull up that individual tenant's account and void the receipt, or in the case of a miscellaneous receipt payment, you must go into the MTD receipts option at the bottom. To void that miscellaneous receipt. And if necessary, if it's an incorrect amount after voiding the receipt, whether it be from here or from the individual's tenant ledger, you would then want to re-enter that receipt for the correct amount. And if you ever notice a receipt is in the wrong batch altogether, you should move the receipt 
using the tenant accounting reassign receipt batch option. To learn more information about managing individual receipts, please view the tenant ledger receipts, miscellaneous receipts, and reassign receipt batches videos respectively.